Director of One Accounting in Edinburgh. And I'm really pleased to welcome you on to the Free Agent Tips and Tools webinar that we're presenting this morning. Uh, with, uh, uh, a little bit more about myself and One Accounting and, and what we do. So that's a picture of yours truly. Um, we work with owner-managed businesses in Edinburgh and the Lothians and throughout Scotland, in fact. Um, we work with people who have a problem with their business not giving them the life that they actually want. And the key thing that we help them do is focus on what's important to them and help them to organize their finances. The benefit of this is that they feel more in control, which means they have more fun and make more money. We, uh, for those of you that uh, are recently new to the firm, this is our office building in Edinburgh. Uh, um, it's not actually the, the whole of the building, but we actually occupy the, the ground floor. Um, we are quite a picturesque view over a, a part of Edinburgh called the Dean Village, which some of you may know. What we're going to be talking about today is, uh, is FreeAgent. FreeAgent is a fantastic online accounting software system that we've been using for, for about four or five years now. And we've got a number of clients that are that are using this. The main benefits that we find it gives our clients that it's, it's online, it's held in the cloud, so you can access it whenever and wherever you want and on any device, whether that's a, a PC, a laptop, or a tablet as well. And because it's hosted in the cloud, we as your accountant can actually go in and view your, uh, your data and help you to troubleshoot various problems that you have as well. So what we're going to be using today for the the webinar is actually a demo company. So we're not looking at live data here, we're not uh, um, sharing any, any client data. So this is a demo company with dummy data in, but it's entirely relevant to uh, the presentation today. So let's get started. Just to give you an overview of what we're going to be looking at, um, we're going to be looking at some of the newer features, features within FreeAgent, and also, we're going to be looking at ways that you can actually take shortcuts to minimize your, your administration time as well. And then we're going to end up by looking at various ways that you can increase uh, the speed of your business actually getting paid from your customers as well. So we'll start off um, by going into the, the banking tab within FreeAgent. And one of the more recent additions that, that FreeAgent have actually launched is uh, something called bank feeds. Now, what this means is, is that um, if you use internet banking, which most people do, it means that instead of having to download a statement and then import it into free agent, you can actually set up a bank feed so that that is imported automatically. So if I just go into the, the business current account here, um, there's a tab just towards the top here called enable bank feed. So if you just click on that, what it will actually bring up then is a whole list of banking websites that uh, are integrated with FreeAgent and actually work with, with bank feeds. So if I just scroll down here, you'll see that it's set up for the UK and the US because FreeAgent does actually have users in the US. You'll see that most of the main UK banks are listed there on the, the left-hand side. So for those of you in Scotland, we've got uh, the Royal Bank of Scotland, We've also got the Bank of Scotland as well, and uh, amongst our own client base, we've also got people using people like Clydesdale and HSBC as well. So what you need to do, first of all, is find your bank, and then just select the button there, click on Next Step, and at this stage, what you will have to do is enter in various security details. Now, it's key, I, I must stress here that you're not actually giving free agent or anyone else carte blanche to go in and access your, your bank statements. All you're entering here are your, your customer number, a security number, and a, and a password. So these are just held temporarily, and there's a bit of software in the background that works away called Yodly, which makes the connection between free agent and your bank. So it's really just to set up the flow of data between, in this case, the Royal Bank of Scotland, uh, back to free agent as well. So obviously because we're using a demo company here, I'm not going to enter in these details, but uh, it takes uh, just a couple of minutes to enter these details in, and then there's a period of time that you need to wait while the actual the data connection is made and allow that information to be flowed through to the, the bank account. But what that will give you, if I just cancel out of there, um, every day that you uh, actually go in in the morning and log into FreeAgent, what you will find is um, 
transactions imported in. So uh, we've just got uh, some some of the transactions in here. But what you will find is uh, transactions imported in every morning, and they'll come through as red transactions. So the red transactions means that these uh, these still need to be allocated in free agent. But what you'll find is that each morning there'll be a batch of transactions added on, and then your role is to go and um, allocate those expenses accordingly. So that's bank fees. That's one of the the newer features within within free agent as well. Another recent addition, if I go to the the overview page here, in the top right hand corner, there's a button called Quick Links. So um, normally the navigation that you will find on free agent is around the top. So we have contacts and work bills, etc. And that's the main way of actually accessing the various features and functions of the program. But within Quick Links, if you, if, if you know exactly what you want to do and record a transaction onto a free agent, you can just go to the Quick Links and select one of the, the options here. So the next thing I'm going to look at in terms of the, the tips I'm going to take you through today is how to deal with out-of-pocket expenses. Now, the reason that I raise this is that amongst our own client base, this is quite a familiar uh, thing that we find is that we come to the end of the year and ask the business owner if all of their transactions are in free agent and invariably there's a few out-of-pocket cash expenses that they've forgotten to put on. It's, it's one of these places that they will need to empty their, their wallet or their purse and uh, they might dig out a dusty old receipt for some stationery that they bought four months ago. So a really good habit to get into is just periodically, uh, whether that's weekly or monthly, just to put your expenses onto to free agents. So using the quick links, we can go to uh, out-of-pocket expenses. And this might be familiar to some of you. It's, it's fairly um, self-explanatory what you need to do there. Uh, but let's just say I have gone out and bought some, some office uh, stationery, for example. Um, so I would go there and yeah, let's just say I bought some office equipment, say I bought a, um, some toner cartridges or something. So I put in the amount here and just put in a brief description to say uh, toner cartridge. Um, I've got a receipt reference there. And then the simple thing there to do is to create the new expense. If I wanted to, I could actually scan in a copy of the receipt and then add it. I'm not going to do that in this case. I'm just going to create expense and I'm actually going to add, add another one because there's another little um, trick that we've, we've used a lot um, which might be of benefit. What um, all business owners can actually do if they spend time working from their house um, on behalf of their business is to claim something called use of home as office. So what this means is, is that you can claim an agreed allowance and it's actually four pounds a week to cover the costs of heating and lighting in your home if you're the, uh, the director or the employee that spends time working at home. <clears throat> so what you can do in, uh, in free agent is actually set up a recurring cost, um, re recurring expense actually for that. So what I'm going to do here is just call it office costs. Uh, the amount is four pounds. Okay. And we'll put in the description there that this is use of home as office at four pounds a week. Okay. What we do now is just scroll down, and this is the, the feature that I really like. You can actually say that this expense is going to recur. So in the case of the four pounds a week, we could just set that up to recur recur weekly. And then we can actually put a close date on it. So Let's just say we want that to run until maybe the end of the tax year, which is uh, the 5th of April 2014. What we do there is just create the new expense. Just let that go through. Okay, so what you can see there, if I then go to my money and look at expenses to see what's actually gone on. Um, Okay, so what we've got here is the first transaction that comes up, which is the use of home as office, um, which is the transaction we've just set up. And if I go back, you can see just in small print there that it will recur weekly until the 5th of April 2014, and it's going to recur again on the, on the 18th of October. So that just flows through every single week, which is quite a, a neat feature to have. If I just go back to the overview page as well, um, here we go, just back to the quick links. And another feature that we really like 
as well within the quick links is just adding on mileage. Again, we find this is something that people f forget to do, basically. Um, the good thing is here is you can um, actually just put in the number of miles that you've traveled on the journey. So let's just um, put in maybe today's today. Okay, and let's just say I've had a long morning and I've traveled from Glasgow to Edinburgh. So I would say Glasgow to Edinburgh. Okay, and you can select the approved mileage rate. And at the moment, the rate is 45p for the first 10,000 miles and then 25p there after that. Um, another thing that you can actually do to save a little bit of VAT, and this is a quite a peculiar VAT rule actually, is that if you have a, a VAT receipt for any form of petrol, you can actually claim a small amount of VAT back. So you, you don't actually need to keep the, the receipt, necessarily match up the receipt, and maybe I bought petrol today. All it means is this, you need to have a, a collection of receipts really to prove that you've bought the fuel. So you would say, yes, I've got a, uh, a VAT receipt. I would then select the, the vehicle that I've actually got and um, I can then create the new expense and we'll just go in and have a look and see what that does. Just on there. So again, if I just go back to my money and expenses. Okay. So it's Glasgow to Edinburgh. I've done 50 miles of 45p a mile. And um, from that, the, the total charge is £22.50. And I've actually claimed back one pound of VAT. So it's a very small amount that you can claim back. It's not the full 20%, but the reason for that is that the 45p is designed to cover not just the fuel that you put in the car, but also the, the running costs as well. So that's a useful thing to have, and also allows you to claim back a little bit more VAT from, from the tax man. Okay, on to the... Uh, the next feature, and this is really about actually getting paid, so a key thing for any business is to obviously um, develop its products and services so that you have a, a client base that are interested in buying from you, you make it easy to buy from you, and then the key thing is actually getting paid as well, um, particularly with, with small businesses, there's a, a big sigh of relief when you actually maybe sign a contract or, or shake hands on a, a particular project, but the key thing is, is actually getting paid. So. Within um, the actual settings feature, there are a couple of nice little features within Free Agent to, um, to really help you with that. So if you go to settings and then email templates, um, what you can do here is really uh, specify the messages that you want to send out with your invoices. So as you know, with Free Agent, you can email a PDF invoice to your customer or your client. And within here, you can just type um, a simple message that's going to appear on every single invoice that you raised. Okay, so many thanks. We really appreciate your business. So that will act as a default that will come out with every single email that you send. A couple of neat features that uh, to show to you here. Um, there is um, a reminder feature. So what we can do on the top right-hand corner here is add a reminder. And what this really does is that if you send out an invoice and it remains unpaid, then you can send a, a polite reminder to your client to, uh, to remind them that it's due for payment. So what you could say is um, if you really want to be on the ball, you could say five days before the invoice is actually due, you could send a message uh, and just remind them that uh, under the payment terms, the invoice is going to fall due. So you could say hi to your client, uh, just a reminder that your invoice is due for payment in five days. It would really be appreciated if you can payment the due date to assist with our cash flow. So just send them a polite message, uh, cash flow. No kind regards. Okay, so with that, 
what we can do there is just create a mind reminder. So that will actually uh, be sent, if you like, to uh, the client just five days before it's, it's going to be due. There's also another feature called thank yous. <clears throat> and this is where you receive payment from your, your client or your customer. And you can just send them a nice message to say that you've actually received payments. So again, you can go in and customize this. Uh, so at the moment, under the, the company that I've got here, every time a payment is made by a customer, it will send out a nice thank you letter. So it's not, it's not often in business that you actually get thanked for, for paying. But I think this is a really nice feature of free agent to allow you to, to do that. OK, we're just going to move on to another couple of features which are designed to help you, you get paid. And the first one of which is uh, called statements. So if you just go to the contact tab on the top line there, and we will pick, pick one of these clients. So we're going to pick Mr. Sweden. What you can see here is the whole history of um, the transactions with this, with this client. So you can look at, in this case, you can look at invoices that you've actually raised for the client as well. What I'm going to look at here is called statement of account. So what happens particularly with, with clients or customers that you're dealing with and you've actually got multiple transactions over a period of time. So for example, in a month, you, you've, you do six separate pieces of work for them. Um, you send them six invoices. What might happen is that they might only pay you for five. So a statement of account is really a, a periodic a statement that you would send to your client maybe at the end of every month to say, these are all the invoices that we've raised in the month, and these are the ones that are outstanding. So what we can do for here is maybe just look at, say, the last uh, three months. So if I go from, say, the beginning of, uh, let's go from the beginning of August to today's date, which is the 24th of October. Um, what I want to show is really um, any open or overdue balances, and then we click on show statement. Okay, let's um, maybe revise that. That's right, I think I might need to just choose another, another customer here. Yeah, let's go into another client because there was no, um, I need to get some more up-to-date data than that. Right, let's go to, to Pet City because that's a bigger amount there. Okay. All right, I think because I'm using a, a demo company here, some of the, uh, the data is a wee bit old. So let's just uh, change the dates a little bit. So again, if I go back to statement of account for this, this client, and what we're going to do is just say from 1st of January 2012 to the 31st of December 2012. And again, let's just look at any open or overdue amounts. Okay, so there we go. So it's a statement of accounts uh, that, you, again, you can send to your, your client. It will have your company details on there as well, and it will show you the balances that are owed. So the key thing here is that Pet City at the end of December 12, owed £2,404.60, and the key thing is it, it specifies out every single invoice that's actually due to, to your business. So again, with this, is, is most screens in, in Free Agent, you can either save it as a PDF, or just send that on to your, your customer, your client, by email. Um, so you can, again, you can, you can put in a, a short message as well just to say, please find attach your statement. So that's another method that we, we find useful as well. There's also a notes tab on the contact page, uh, which is useful just, <laughs> this is funny, right, okay. So this is obviously um, a client that we've got that, uh, that sells pet products. So what you can do, is just add a note um, to say something like phoned, phoned the client and they advised payment would be made next week. Okay, so what we can do there is just put a short message, add a note. <clears throat> so the key thing is here that everyone in the organization can just go in and see if any comments have been made about that actual client. So it means you can share information throughout your, your organization. So there were some things on actually getting paid. So just a reminder, we looked at uh, sending out email reminders that payments were due. We could also send out an email thank you when your client had actually paid you. 
and by looking at the, the contacts tab, we can actually raise statements of account and send that to uh, that sheet to your customer. Um, the, to, just to, to wrap things off, um, wrap things up, there are a couple of things I'm just going to take you through. Firstly, on taxes and then on accounting. So if you just go to the dashboard within Free Agent, if I just scroll down here, a uh, fantastic feature called Tax Timeline, which we just go on to now. Okay, so what we have here is basically a timeline of all the taxes that are due for your business um, into the, the near future. So within here, we've got m most of the major, major taxes uh, for this client. <coughs> so there's a VAT return that's going to be due in 14 days. Uh, moving forward, we've got um, on the 1st of January 2014, we need to pay some corporation tax. And then at the 31st of January 2014, there's uh, actually an income tax liability as well. But this, uh, this lucky individual has actually due a refund of three pounds, as it were. What you can do is just use the down arrow here and you can scroll forward. So it actually enables you to look at maybe what your tax liability is for the current year. So for this particular company, we've got an estimate of the corporation tax for the current year. So the current year doesn't end until the 31st of March 2014. Uh, but on the current run rate and on the current profit and loss account, we've got a tax liability there of £2,368. So again, it's useful just to scan into the future to see what your, your current run rate for taxes and VAT is here. So what we'd advise clients, although this corporation tax isn't due until January 2015, um, if you've got a reasonable amount of cash in the bank, it would make sense to to ring fence that tax money, maybe put it into a separate bank account so you know that when the time comes, you've actually got the funds set aside to, to pay the income tax. So that's a, a really nice feature on, on tax timeline that I suggest you use uh, as often as you can. Okay, the final thing we're going to look at on today's webinar is just to take you through a couple of accounting reports as well. So again, the real beauty of free agent is that it puts you and the business owner in control um, of your, your finances. Back in the day, it could be that uh, a client would maybe have a manual system or Excel or use maybe Sage and they weren't entirely clear about what their sales and profits were. So the key thing for us is that we want our clients to become better financial managers and really improve their financial literacy and Free Agent allows you to do that. So we'll just look at a couple of reports here. So if we look at profit and loss, which is the, uh, the first report here, um, the feature I like is that it, it initially, the first thing you see is that the banking data is incomplete. So what this means is, okay, we can run a profit and loss account, but it's really a warning sign to say that there are some unexplained bank transactions, so we might not necessarily be seeing the full, the full picture. So what this would mean is, uh, maybe to be absolutely accurate, you'd go and look at the unexplained bank transactions and allocate them off. So the, those are the trans transactions that are in red. Uh, the way that we actually use the profit and loss feature here at One Accounting, we look at things two ways. So you can look at the, the actual yearly profits. So just by selecting the year, um, it will update the screens there. So you can uh, look at your sales, cost of sales and admin expenses. And if we scroll right down to the bottom of the screen here, we can actually look at the, uh, the operating profit for the business. That's a really good useful summary on an annual basis to see how your business is actually performing. Um, another thing that we, we recommend is actually to use the monthly tab as well. So again, if we look at the same financial year and press the monthly tab there, uh, what we can get from there is actually to build up a picture of how the year has gone for us. So this particular client here, the initial observation we would make is that their, their actual sales are up and down like a yo-yo, as you can see. We go from 11,000 down to nothing. Uh, July and August is obviously summertime and not much has happened and then towards the end of the year the sales go back up. So this is actually a really useful grid for actually spotting trends as well. Uh, the other thing it's worth doing as well is just drilling down into some of the, the expenses as well. So for example here on accommodation and meals I've got a, a cost there of a thousand pounds that uh, maybe doesn't ring a bell with me. So just by clicking on the, the blue hyperlink there what we can actually do is just drill down and look into what the expense was. So uh, the thousand pounds here, if I just go into um, that there, okay, so it's some, some accommodation and some, some meals that I've incurred back in, uh, 
October 12. Again, if you've actually attached a copy of the receipt to the transaction, it enables you or perhaps another person of your, your organization to, like I say, to drill down and, and have the, almost the bit of paper, the hotel bill in front of them as well. But it's useful just to, um, in a sense, check the numbers here and, uh, and drill down into some of the, the bigger figures, as it were. Okay. The, uh, the next report we'll just have a quick look at is the, the balance sheet. So again, go back to accounting and reports. And this is probably just the best one sentence summary I've had about, about balance sheets. Balance sheets are normally things that accounting students learn in, in college and then forget about. But basically a balance sheet is what your business owns and what it owes at a given point in time. So if we just go there, um, the things that it owns are called assets. Okay, So typically you might have computer equipment and other physical assets. Um, you then have other assets which we call current assets which in this organization is stock and it's money in the bank as well. And then we have liabilities which is what the, the actual business owes and we have um, things like trade creditors, these are suppliers and, um, and some pay as you earn as well. And then there's some salary and bonus and, and other things that uh, are there as well. So. What we would just recommend looking at on the balance sheet, and it's down here at the bottom in red, is called the suspense account. Now, a suspense account is really an account that you would use to almost to flow transactions through. So typically, we would use that to process refunds uh, that uh, maybe the, the customer would get. But the whole uh, theory behind a suspense account is that it should revert back to zero. Okay, so you would almost have an equal and opposite entry going through. So always worth just looking to see what's in the suspense account. So in this case, uh, it actually looks like it's an old transaction. Let's just see if I can identify it right. Okay, I don't think I'm going to be able to do that because it, it goes back to before 2011. But when you're looking at your balance sheet, again, the two things you want to make sure of to make sure that you're getting an accurate picture. Firstly, that all of the, the actual bank transactions have been allocated and then that there's nothing sitting in the, the actual suspense account there. That's a quick, simple check that you should do as well. Again, we've got that warning signal at the top for, uh, for the banking data being incomplete. Okay, the last couple of things in terms of today's webinar on the reports we're going to look at are going to be, um, firstly, we'll look at the age debtors. Again, I think this is one of you, one that many of you be familiar with. So this is a statement at any point in time of what your customers actually owe you. So this is maybe we should focus attention to help improve your your cash flow, and on the opposite side, your creditors is what you actually owe to your, your customers and your suppliers. And again, to maintain good uh, supplier relationships, you want to make sure that you're paying your, your clients or your suppliers fairly, fairly regularly as well. Um, so it's a good report. Again, you can just drill down into various invoices that you've got. If you want to look at a particular um, transaction that you're not sure about, you just need the drill down facility there. Okay, so that's age debtors and creditors. Uh, one sort of slight weakness, I would say, with free agent is actually uh, working with the data in Excel. Um, there's no option within the profit and loss to actually run that report to an Excel spreadsheet if that's how you want to, to work things. So it's maybe uh, one of the weaknesses. You can see here on the screen there's no option to, to do anything other than to, to view the report. You can actually just do a file and print if you wanted to, to print it out to paper. Uh, but what we do ourselves when we actually want to produce reports say in Excel, we can go to the trial balance and there's quite a handy little report here um, and it's called transaction CSV. So what I've done there is just uh, okay. It's not that one. Just give you one second. Okay, we're just getting the transactions open. Right. Um, let's just make that a little bit bigger as well. Okay, so what I've done here is just export all of the transactions uh, in Free Agent to, to Excel. And what this allows you to do, uh, if you're a reasonably comfortable Excel user, you can produce uh, things like pivot tables to help you analyze the data further. And then you can also use the chart function to, um, you know, you can do bar charts and pie charts and everything else. So. Uh, again, it's a, I'd say it's a slight weakness of a free agent that you can't um, actually generate reports to Excel directly from the software, but that's generally what we do uh, with, with things, is export things to uh, a CSV file 
and work with that in Excel. Okay, well that uh, concludes today's webinar. I hope it's been useful. So just to recap of what we've looked at today, we've looked at bank feeds, a really useful way of getting your transactions into free agent without actually having to, to download them and import them. We looked at methods of making sure that you have all of your out-of-pocket expenses covered. So we looked at use of home and how to set up a recurring entry for that. Um, and also business mileage as well. <clears throat> There's a small amount of VAT that you can reclaim on business mileage uh, just by following the, the screen of the free agent. We also looked at a couple of good ways of making sure that you get paid, which is to set up email reminders and, uh, and thank you notes as well, and also sending out statements to your customers on a regular basis. And then just to close, we've looked at the, some of the accounting reports. That would be uh, a worthwhile exercise to look at your profit and loss by, by account, uh, sorry, by month as well. And then finally, we've looked at a way of actually uh, exporting data over to, to Excel. So I'm just going to check now briefly if there's any um, questions that have come in today. Just bear with me one second. Um, Okay, I don't think that they have. Okay, well, I hope that's been useful. Um, what we do with all these videos, we just, uh, we're recording it and then we pop it up on YouTube as well at a later date. So if there's anything you think you've missed on the webinar or you want to share it with a friend or colleague, then uh, YouTube is the way to go. You can just check out the, the One Accounting channel. So thanks for uh, being uh, joining me today on the webinar. It's Chris Thomas, One Accounting, signing off and have a good day. Thank you.